In the Holy Land, the Crusaders took to wearing cloth surcoats over their chainmail male armour because the armour got so hot in the sun. Complete rubbish. Hi folks, Matt Eaton here, Scholar Gladiator, and I'm going to try and keep this as brief as possible. Male armour does not get really hot in the sun. Yes, indeed, metal can absorb heat from the sun's rays. It also radiates heat pretty well. It's a good conductor of heat. Hence, we don't have winter jackets and duvets made of iron or steel because it's a good conductor of heat. Yes, it gets hot quickly. It gets cool quickly as well. And the fact is that mail, in case you've never noticed, is made up of a weave of um, of rings. It's full of holes. It is literally armour that's full of holes and it doesn't get especially hot. Um, now, we could therefore ask, well, what was the surcoat all about? Well, I'm going to come back to that at the end, but first of all, I just want to illustrate male armour is actually one of the coolest types of armour you can wear in hot weather. This is very much a subject on my mind at the moment, because those of you who don't know, at the moment we're having a rather hot spell of weather in the UK, by UK standards, obviously. Uh, so in um, Celsius, up to around 30 degrees at the moment. And in a couple of weeks' time, I'm going to be back with my friends at the Tewksbury reenactment, and I'm going to be in full plate harness, uh, dreading it being super hot weather. Now, when we come to wearing things, things that do contain and retain a lot of heat and make you very hot and are horrible to wear, um, woolen doublets, okay? So clothes, typical clothes that civilians wore at this time. And I should mention as well that in the 14th and 15th centuries, there was a cold period in Northern Europe, actually. Um, so probably the average temperature in summer was lower than it is now. So we're having to deal with higher temperatures, but we're trying to wear replica clothing. Uh, and deal with deal with these with this heat. Um, so woolen clothing is particularly unpleasant um, to wear. And bear in mind as well, you have layers. So I have a linen shirt which goes underneath, and over that a doublet, and over that a coat. So I've got two layers of wool over a layer of linen in 30 degree, potentially 30 degrees, certainly high mid to high 20s degree summer temperature unpleasant. However, mail, no problem at all. I'd literally rather wear a shirt of mail than all of the normal civilian clothes, which is one of the reasons why I think this argument that surcoats came around to protect the mailed crusaders from overheating just doesn't hold water because you're adding another layer of fabric. Adding a another layer of fabric is going to make you more hot, not less hot. And remember that underneath the, uh, the mail is a garment, an arming gar a garment of types. Now, we could call that a gambeson, we could call it an arming coat, arming doublet, but the fact is, it goes by various different days, different periods, um, but the fact is it has some degree of layering to it, at the very least, and sometimes a degree of padding to it as well. Now, probably not as much as a lot of modern reenactors actually use, um, for various reasons. I mean, one just being because a modern safety conscious world and wanting to absorb blunt impact, whereas they're going to have to be on campaign for a long period of time and potentially fighting or besieging for a long period of time. So they don't want to necessarily over bulk themselves, whereas a reenactor only has to maybe go on the field for an hour or two, um, uh, you know, a few times in the summer. But uh, the fact is that the fabric underneath is the real problem, not the mail, okay? What other things, what other armour really makes you hot? I'm just going to grab one from behind the camera here. Helmets! Helmets make you super hot because number one, it is a completely enclosed, yeah, okay, it might have an open face, um, particularly in the crusading era, but it might not. It might be a great helm um, or it could be a conical helm, but the fact is it is a container of heat that is, doesn't breathe, it doesn't have ventilation in it, it is just a big old steel bowl that goes on your head and it has some degree of padding, in other words insulation, inside it. So helmets, super hot and uh, certainly if you're wearing full plate harness, the moment you take your helmet off, oh my god the difference, actually it's just amazing taking a helmet off when you've been in armour in, uh, in the heat. Also, talking about that armour, plate harness. So here's the upper part of my uh, breastplate. Again, it is a great container of heat. However, 
Yes, it does absorb heat from the, from the sun's rays, but it also radiates heat as well. Um, some people have commented, is there a difference between blackened armor and polished armor? I don't know. We could do some experiments with that in the future. If there's an appetite for that, let me know down in the comments below. Uh, and incidentally, if you're watching this video and you haven't clicked like yet, please do so. Uh, but plate armor basically contains the heat in, in your body. It doesn't let it get out very, very easily. Also moisture, you get very wet under there, very, very sweaty. So plate armour is a much, much bigger problem for heat than mail is. Mail is fantastic. Mail is like what you'd choose to wear in a hot country. Surprise, surprise. What did they wear in India, North Africa, the Middle East? They wore mail armour, predominantly. Okay. Um, also, I wanted to talk about brigandine. So some people might be under the apprehension, misapprehension, I would say, that a brigandine is somehow cooler to wear than plate armor. Well, if you, you could say that with a brigandine often you won't have your arms and legs encased if you're like an archer for example. However you might, if you're a man at arms you might wear this instead of the, uh, the plate cuirass here. But my experience and that of my close friends, and your mileage might vary on this, again comments down below if you are a, a brigandine wearer or a harness wearer, my experience and my good friend's experience is that brigandines are hotter than plate harness. Uh, and I think the reason is because you've got fabric and plate. So not only can't you, your body kind of breathe through the plate, obviously, but you've got fabric over the top as well. So essentially, insulation. So to cut a long story short, the argument that Crusaders wore surcoats because of the hot sun on their male armour doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever because various other types of armour I would consider to be hotter. Going all the way back to the Roman period, Lorica segmentata, uh, I would say linothorax uh, is probably hotter to wear than male. Male's actually fantastic in hot weather because it breathes because it's a great big mesh with loads of holes in it. The problem, the only problem with male is the fabric layers that you have to wear with it or that were often and usually worn with it. They contain heat, they are a problem. Now adding the surcoat on top, why would you do that then? Because that's another layer of fabric over the top. I don't think it's anything to do with the heat whatsoever. And in fact we see, let's go to India for example, people wearing male shirts, head to foot, long sleeves, down to the feet, with a cooler could helmet, a Persian inspired helmet. They don't have surcoats over there. Sometimes they have something like a surcoat, but usually they don't. So in hot countries where they're wearing mail, there are plenty of places where they didn't put a surcoat over the top. So why did Europeans in the Crusades start putting surcoats over the top? I don't know. <laughs> what are your theories? I do have some possible theories, and one of them is actually related to archery. So uh, if you've been following um, Todd and Co's uh, Arrows versus Armour, um, you will know that generally speaking, really good quality mail can stand up to arrows of certain kinds, but very often arrows will go through mail. Um, and we do of course know that this was the f probably the first time in that period of medieval history when Europeans found themselves faced with massed Seljuk archery. Uh, and I wonder if actually surcoats were actually partly an anti archery or, or to, to sort of augment the protection that mail offered by having a fabric layer over the top. One possible theory, there are other possible ones as well which maybe I'll look at in a future video just looking at the surcoat. But so to conclude, the idea that mail is somehow horrific to wear in heat in relative terms is complete rubbish as far as I'm concerned. Of all the types of armour and in fact of all of the types of things that you can wear in hot weather, mail is really quite pleasant and maybe that's one of the reasons why the Roman legions used male um, lorica hamata for a lot longer than they used lorica segmentata in fact. Your, in, your comments, your experiences, your insights, very welcome to post them below. I hope I see you back on the channel really soon. I have been Matt Easton and I will continue to be. Cheers folks. Thanks for watching. We've got extra videos on Patreon. Please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers folks.